Just gonna flick them in. <laughs> it's day two of our elk hunting trip, and if you haven't watched part one but you'd like to watch it, the link will be in the description below. This morning we nipped down to the local town to get some supplies that we'd forgotten and have an American breakfast. We ended up having biscuits and gravy, which is pretty much just a scone with white sauce and needs the lashings of Tabasco to make it even remotely edible. But we did see a hummingbird and that was awesome. Around mid-afternoon we headed back into the unit with camp on our backs, intending to fight in through the wind blow again and stay the night ready for the following morning. Going on the fence and go that way. I only huh. went further in because there was a track. Yeah. I couldn't see this track going this far. Uh -huh. Oh Good. No such thing as the dead end. <laughs> Just bushwhack. I don't think it'll be a dead end. Yeah. I'm not from Fife, I'm from Perth. Five people have webbed feet. It's a thing. They're too close to the sea. <laughs> That's why your pack's so heavy, because you've got a camera in it. I've got everything. <laughs> I've got like literally so much shit. All of the essential stuff. Oh, this creek. <laughs> Stream. Burry. Burry. That's Burry. <laughs> Is the one further up that we saw the alcohol. See, see. Yeah. So we're like, we're on it there. Okay. So like we've got to there, and that was a mile through wind blow in 20 minutes. Yeah, what what time did we leave? Three, quarter to three. Quarter to three? Did you say quarter to three or did you say quarter past three? I can't remember. Quarter to three. Quarter to three. Three quarters of an hour. Yeah, it's four or five minutes. But that's good because that trail goes off that way. And if yeah. we go along into there anywhere, we're getting like... Whatever that elk run back down to. Yeah, I totally. And I think what we'll do is we'll get ourselves to where one of them think they might funnel down. Because mm -hmm. they'll come down, because there's wind blowing between the drainages. The, the, the drainages. <laughs> the drainages. The drainages. <laughs> In between the drainages is where the wind blows. Yes. Every time we got to a, a valley, it was easy walking. Yeah? yeah. Every time we went up out the valley, it was wind blow. And down in the wind blow, and then clear. So if everyone's like that, the elk are going to funnel down there. Mm. So if we get ourselves in till we see elk sign... Oh wow, do you see that? Jeez! <laughs> if we They're get ourselves in till we see elk sign of them coming up and down, and then we basically make ourselves a hide kind of bit, and sit looking down into it, mm. and sit there until it gets dark, yeah, and watch yeah, totally. them coming down past. Cool. Something like that. Sounds good to me. Cool. Just need to be a bit wary of the wind. Because that was a pain in the arse yesterday, like. Oh yeah, but the wind's yeah. coming. I know, just once we're The okay. wind's blowing down here and yeah. in our face. So. Yeah, yeah, I know. For now. <laughs> Yesterday well, it kept changing. Now, yeah. yeah, but at night it should come downhill when it yeah. goes cold. Yeah, the thermals. Yeah. That was a big dragonfly. 
What, that flew into us? Yeah. I thought it was one of them cricket things. No, it was a dragonfly. Oh. It, it, it flew at us and then went round the back or something down there. That was an easy walk. Yeah, because it's If a we path. get one, this is where we're coming, don't we? Yeah, yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. That'd have been cross. <laughs> if I'd shot that one the other day. Taking and it all humped it all through all that wind, but <laughs> and then found this. <laughs> Christ. That would have been funny. Been about right. Get the last bag back, talk to some Americans, and, and they go, yeah, Oh, there's a path. You there. were 100 yards off that track. I could have <laughs> took my ATV out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Where's my Nalgene? Nalgene. <laughs> why do they call it a Nalgene? I don't know. Is it crap? Oh, well, that's annoying. Check the mic works. It'd be hilarious if we were like within 100 yards of this track somewhere and then we like beasted through all that wind blow. <laughs> yeah, we probably did. I bet we did. <laughs> well, we were within 800 yards of it where we're sat now. Look, look, look yeah. from there to there. So we literally did just fight through lots of wind blow. When there was. To be fair, it was really fun. I enjoyed it. It was fun. It wasn't fun. It was fun. ridiculous. <laughs> it wasn't fun at all. Felt like it was like, you know, those like scout camps where they've got like the balance beams <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> You're in the Marines now! <laughs> Get your ass over there! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Mm, pretty much. Mm. I wouldn't make a good Marine. Mm. I'm not in Dano. <laughs> I wonder where this track goes. It goes across the hills. Oh. Just keep walking, cause like, yeah. so all them other folk were up in here, and they were beasting it through. They won't have gone far. They'll have gone into that big. I'll put this on. The, mm. This one. The, see, they'll have gone into this big yeah. drainage here. They'll have probably bumped. We probably bumped the elk out of there the other day, cause we went up in there. They'll mm. have bumped the elk about up in there. Yeah. We just carry on along this track a bit and get round. Mm. In the here somewhere. And we can come down and we can see what happens, can't we? Yeah. Um, but like some of the hunters we've met have been young, kind of fit guys, so like. Yeah, but I that doesn't mean they're going to want to go loping over bloody wind blow for three drains. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Let's see what. So. The reason why nobody knows this track's here is because you can't see it on the aerial image because it goes under the tree canopy. Yeah, but there's plenty of footprints. People know it's here. Yeah, 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 but we didn't know it was here until we walked along it because you can't see it on Onyx. Huh. It's not marked on Onyx. And it's, you can't see it on Google Earth because it, it goes and then it goes into them walls and stops. That's what it looks like. Huh. But actually it doesn't, does it? So. I think this is bears. No, it's dust bears. <laughs> Dust wallows. Oh, right. These are cows. Cows do it at home. Yeah, they get out. Around and you see a big puff of dust coming yeah. from around. But the elk might do it too. Huh. We got back in here easy, didn't we? sign and if we don't then we'll maybe go cross country back over below where we 
we saw the sign the other day. And then we go up that one. We see if there's any more sign here, and then we know. Because if there's no sign here, and a sign there, and then there's no sign there, they're coming up and down that drainage. Yeah. Yeah. So just uh, keep heading up through there, look. Awesome. Go. Yeah. So after all yesterday's effort, it turns out there was actually a path. And straight away we're into roughly the area we wanted to be in. After leaving the path a hundred yards or so we saw lots of sign and with a lot of the afternoon left we felt like it was a good idea to explore and do some calling setups which we kind of forgot to do yesterday. As we walked along, I spotted some movement a few hundred yards over to our left through the trees. Rod stayed behind and called whilst I sneaked in closer. It turned out to be a mule deer. Not the kind of deer that we were looking for, but really cool to see nonetheless. Under the trees there. Sorry. We can go under the trees there, it's quite open bit in the trees.
Both Rod and I had a gut feeling there was a beastie in here. We both work in deer management, and it's something we regularly say. If you have a gut feeling that there's a deer there, then there's probably going to be a deer there. It's almost like a sixth sense, and it's something that's probably not given enough credit amongst stalkers. But trusting your gut usually works out well. And same in the reverse. If you feel like you're not going to get one, you're probably not going to get one. We heard movement in front of us, but shortly after we heard movement from behind too. The noise from behind turned out to be the same hunters from yesterday, and that's just karma. <laughs> we stopped to get the crack and find out how their day had gone. I literally just turned off the camera here and something big thundered off in the bushes straight in front of us. We were definitely busted, but we split up and set up a call to see if we could calm it down, if it did happen to be an elk. We're kicking ourselves for not trusting our guts a bit more here. Back home, even if a cyclist or a dog walker, or in this case other hunters comes past, it doesn't always mean your stock is ruined. Mentally we gave up when we saw them and it might have just cost us another encounter with an elk.
I mean, don't get me wrong, I'd be a little bit on edge if there was grizzly bears here, but like, I know black bears can fuck you up too. But there's two of us, lots of noise, bear spray, yeah, you know what I mean? I'm more worried about the skinwalkers. Oh. <laughs> yeah, cool. Huh? Yeah, fair enough. Oh, ouch. We're back on the path and Rod's pretty happy about it. I am, but there's still a long way to go. And all I'm willowy bit, I don't like that willowy bit, that's the kind of bit where a moose or a bear would be hiding, so. Ah, yeah. This would be a good bit to camp though, but I don't want to camp. Okay. We did set off with the best intention of camping, but uh, we found a, a sweet spot pretty close to where the cars are, so we're going to go ditch the gear and go in late in the morning.
as hell going on. I definitely hit it though. But it came in studio for a long time. And we've actually got blood. <laughs> so. It was the right place, just a little low, but like. I'm still not convinced, but. Yeah. I don't know, like... I hit him low. Blood, blood. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I've, I've been messing with that to try and get some on my finger, like, so it's... <laughs> uh, uh, it's just low, I just wonder if I got inside. <laughs> Yeah, it's whether I got inside the ribs or not, that's the thing. But, uh, yeah, yeah. And he, he jumped, you know, like, you know. <laughs> Hopped up. Uh, yeah. Um, and then he stood. But, um, and he just stood there for ages, but he was licking. You know, burned around, licking, licking, licking. Well, she's got it all on film, like, so. Yeah, that's him coming up. It takes yeah. a while to come in. But, hi. Oh, sorry. He, was he screaming? I haven't. You you no, no, I'm just coming up. That's what like. <laughs> yeah, that's the shit we've been looking for. Yeah. <laughs> this whole time. Like he looks like he's on top of me, doesn't he? Mm hmm Is that the private that like That's the private here? boundary, yeah. <laughs> so I, I just I'd pinged him with a range finder there and I waited to draw. I, I drew as he jumped. And I squeaked him. Mm. Dude, that's hard. That's hard shot. Like it's so low. Like, but it's hard. That's. I think that's safer than like forward or like middle. That looks so low. Like it's gonna be a hard shot. He ducked actually as it goes, doesn't he? Yeah. 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 It's, it's like he meets it. He stood for a while and there's blood just under his armpit and he's licking it and licking did it. Did you zoom in on him? Did you? I can yeah. do, but like. No, I'm saying. Did, oh, you zoom. I yeah. see what you mean. You zoomed in. Yeah, yeah. I, I can pause it and then I can zoom in after that on this camera. Mm. But like. It's a bit crashy when you do that. <laughs> um, so. I would love to know how long your arrow was in the air. <laughs> Whack. Take it back to the bit where he got shot. Let's see it again. Let's see if <laughs> I just want to see. I would want to see the hit again. Just yeah. That's the first time I've seen it. <laughs> right. Like you can't zoom in with video. You can just pause. <laughs> You have <laughs> <projects>. <laughs> Zoom it right in. No, oh, that's low. That's real low. How did you? How did you take it back? Uh, hold on. He does. He did seem to kick the arrow. I think that's almost looked leg like. It's real low. No, uh, that's forward. Who should? It's just gone forward again. Sorry, I need to come back now. Well, there you go. Dick. We at least put this on a computer and see it bigger. Yeah, yeah. No, that's low. Yeah. It goes under him. Like. Yeah, it made. It looks like it hit the chest cavity because its left leg was forward. We'll have to look through because so, there's a blood trail. Like, so we'll have to. We'll have to it inject looks, it. Like, it looks under him to me. Like. Yeah. I mean, I could have hit a vein. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I could have hit a vein. <laughs> cool. Forward in the chest cavity. That's. The heart sits lower on those than it does a deer. That just looks like it's under. That would explain why it's all bust up on the knock. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I'll go have a look. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think we need to give him a wee while though. So. Yeah. I mean, I heard yeah. a kind of a, like a grunt. Like when see, we shoot seek a deer, they make a lot of noise sometimes when they die. Heard that kind of noise in the bushes, so we just kind of left. And I don't know if that was him or not, but. Yeah. yeah. I think that's yeah. a lot lower. Gives the time it takes to pass. Yeah. Wait, man. But that was fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How far away did you guys spot him at first? Oh, uh, way. Ah, uh, way out on way the private. On the private, like he was. So you know, there's a pond there. We're like yeah. 400 yards away, like. Oh yeah, there's yeah. a pond there. Yeah, there's a yeah. pond there. Yeah. We, we we were looking at some cranes, 
and he was no, you the other side <laughs> of the Scotland. Yeah, yeah. And there's a there's a line of trees come out into the private. And I said he's gonna come to that line, so I shot off, but I, I lost sight of him and I didn't want to move and let him see me, so I stopped. And I wish I just cause the wind was going Kept straight going. into the mm. private. And he was far enough ahead of me, yeah. but I needed to make sure that I didn't get too close. Mm. So I held up for a second. If I'd have gone another twenty yards, yeah, I'd have been bang on him, you know? Like there's a little log cabin, there's two meadows side by side going in, and there's a little old log cabin on there, and he, he must have been heading into that. Sweet man. So they live here. They're just quick for a short amount of time. Yeah, yeah, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's going back to grazing. It's a lot of red grass. Yeah, I kind of went that kind of way. stood there for a while and then he moved and he stood again. There's some more there, just on that wee stick. And some here on that grass, yeah. Tiny little bit there. Shit, turned the tractor on. Starting to become a popular thing in the Midwest is tracking dogs. Oh, yeah. Tracking dogs and drones. Drones. <laughs> There's a lot of companies that help you track with thermal drones. Oh wow. Can you do that? Not here. Oh no. I we can. Wow. Yeah, there's it seems silly not to be able to because right, it's yeah, better. It's, you go get your dog now and you walk along this and you you know, way higher percentage of chance of finding. The drone mm. one you can't use it to find deer but or you can't use it to hunt deer, but you can use it to recover. Yeah, yeah. there's a guy that does it in Cedar Rapids. Oh, that's cool. They do uh, that wasn't so stupid at <laughs> Like deer counts with drones in Scotland, like they'll do like a survey. But oh like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they do it here with helicopters. Oh, cool. Oh, I used to do it with helicopters, and then they got drones. <laughs> Way cheaper. Yeah, I totally. 
You got some beer? If you like just started kind of clotting up or something, then that's why there's less. On the back side, yeah. yeah. You kind of guessed it, looks like. Yeah. Yeah, there's a little bit. More. Is that a spot? No, it's the join in the grass. There's some there. I think that's the joint. There is some right here. Yeah. A little bit there. Yep, still going this way. Never did find uh, you got the the rest of the arrow is still with him. Never seen it, yeah. Yeah. Here's some here. Yeah. Yeah, blood. And that's where I heard the noise, is up there. I'm going to apologise for this bit of film because it's a little bit boring but I uh, needed to leave it in just so that people could see that we really did search for this blood trail and to try and follow this elk. Um, the blood trail was just typical for a brisket. If you uh, hit the brisket there's often a sign of blood straight away that quickly runs out. It's typical that you'll get 200 yards of trail which is about exactly what we got on this elk. We um, searched from miles up the kind of meadow beyond where you can see in this film and uh, spent probably two or three hours looking and uh, these guys gave up their whole day's hunting nearly to come and help us so it was uh, it was a big team effort some more. I don't know. I didn't see him again. Drops up into that creek drain and try and get Ah, shit. Nah, I don't think there's lot, a lot more to be done, really, is there? The only thing I could think is he could have doubled back into that little block of woodland. Well, there's a big trail going across there. Like yeah, I was following it when you whistled me, but there was no blood on it. But it's had something across it recently. 
So maybe just check back there behind the log cabin. It's what I expected. Like it's just exactly what I expected. Huh. He stood there long enough to make some blood yeah. at that first spot, and then those little spots got smaller and smaller as we went. It just, <laughs> it's just. It's just perfect for just having zipped across the bare bottom or the back of, you know, like in his yeah. armpit, kind of. There's nothing there that's going to kill him. Yeah. No, it's all muscle. That basically yeah. it's pretty hard to scare him. Yeah. There'll be a bit of blood come out, but that'll quickly stop. Uh, mm. Are you probably going to hunt the same area in the morning? I don't like, know. Generally? I don't know what to do. Mm. I was going to say, if, like, morning or tonight, we could go up higher. Yeah. Well, I guess that wind would fucking we didn't have to do it in the morning. Yeah. But we can go higher to see it eyes on him, see if he's still alive and maybe shooting yeah. in. He might come down through this back back out again tonight, wouldn't he? I mean that's maybe what he's doing. I don't know. I was trying to find where he's bedded on the map and it's pretty flat for the ways and then it kicks up. Yeah. Oh, he called me there. <laughs> it's like just copy the fucking numbers that I gave you. <laughs> Put them in the fucking map. <laughs> He would find the bag on the fence there. He found that. Yeah, he, found he got to there. There you go. Okay. Come to follow blood. I told him to stay in the field so he didn't get lost. Can you get that fucking pink Phelps to make a noise? Oh yeah. I, I, I bought. They didn't have any. I was using the Maverick and uh, I couldn't find any in Cabela's or anywhere. They're all sold out of them. There's plenty of them pink ones left. <laughs> I got an extra Maverick. Oh no no! I've got two or three of them. I, I, actually, I've that pitch black. <sighs> That pitch black one is quite nice just for making quiet calls. So I thought this one's really quiet. Yeah. And it buzzes. So I just bought <coughs> bought a variety pack. Yeah, yeah. Pack. One of those was in it with just the black and the green one. Yeah, yeah. I should just throw those away because I can't. I've put the pink one in my mouth and I just couldn't get it to point my open air. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so I took what you could get one. Um, the evening on day three. Day one I had a elk at 15 yards that I couldn't get a shot at. Day two we didn't go out in the morning, we went in the evening and I don't know what we got close to but there was a big animal which I can only imagine was an elk run off just 20 yards from us in thick stuff. So um, this morning when we got up, we were going to come along this private boundary because we found a nice uh, trail that goes way into where we wanted to be. So we waited till it was light enough to see, to walk in, just on the off chance that we saw any. Anyway, we just only just started walking really and we got to where the farmland is. And uh, out in the distance there was a bull elk, you know, a shootable bull elk pretty much walking straight at us. Um, the wind was going not straight at him but straight out into the field. Um, so I shot along the fence a little bit because I got him out of sight of us. Um, got so far along and I got a bit nervous of my wind so I stopped. I wish I'd carried on a little bit further but he, he came across eventually in front of me and uh, jumped the fence and when he jumped the fence I drew give him a cow call and he stopped still settled on him let it go and it looks to me as if I hit three inches low I think I hit brisket and possibly deflected downwards instead of upwards and there was blood all over the arrow when we found it he, he ran out to 170 yards and stood and when we got to where he was stood, there was a good pool of blood there. And so we backed out and left him for a couple of hours. And we came back in with a bunch of Americans to help us. Some guys that we met from, well, there's some from New York and there's some from Illinois, I think. Um, they came and helped us track. And we um, tracked him for 
something around 175 yards but it got less and less and less blood, just a little drip and then we grid searched right away up right away up the trees that he seemed to have run up through never found any more sign at all to say I'm gutted would be an understatement it's a, a bitter, bitter pill to swallow really and, um, we've got five or six days left to hunt this evening I'm going to sit here in the same spot and just see if I happen to see him come back out on the private so I know he's out there for morning uh, I'm not convinced that that's a good plan it's something to do, it's a nice evening um, in the morning we're going to go basically do the same as we did this morning come in here in the dark and sit here see if we can spy him out in these fields they grow hay here so there's some really green fields here um, sit here and wait, see if he's out there, try and cut him off again, try and finish the job that I didn't quite manage this morning. Um, yeah, and then if we don't see him, we're going to carry on further in to where we've seen a lot of elk sign and found a wallow. There's a load of little uh, meadowy kind of bits under the trees. There's beds everywhere, there's wallows, there's the trees that have been raked, there's definitely elk in there. So we'll uh, push on up into there. We, that's where we were on the elk the first day, really. But we found a better way in, so... Anyway, that's the plan as it stands at the moment. If you look just down this fence line... He was down that fence line just above the first rise there. He was about 100 yards past that, where he was where I shot at him. And he came from... I don't know... You can see a roof out there. A way out in here. A way out in here. And he walked all the way down. Right through here. And I knew he was going to come to these trees. I knew as soon as I saw him he was coming to these trees. And he came round the corner. And along the front of them. And he came through these willows. I, uh, I just wish I'd been able to get just a little closer. I'd, I don't know. I'm annoyed with myself. I mean, I was so close at three inches, I think, and he would have been dead. Anyway, nothing much more I can say about that, so... That's all I'm going to have to say, unless an elk walks out here and I manage to get to shoot it tonight and manage to put this camera back on. Who knows? So this evening Rod's headed back out to where he shot the elk this morning in hopes that he sees it again and hopefully gets a better shot this time. And uh, if not, we'll go back out in the morning to the same place and try and get him. But uh, I've headed out alone tonight to hopefully, well, hopefully see a coyote. I really want to see one, but I'd quite like a chance to hunt one too, so if the opportunity arises. But the wind's right for walking down the boundary fence, so I'm just going to kind of slowly pace along here and hopefully intercept one going out to the fields, but who knows, I'd like to just see one, or hear them again. That first night was awesome, howling away. It's just a really nice evening today, like it's nice to be out. thing just went past there. Anyway, it's, the sun's gone down behind the hill. I want to crack on and see if I can't get a coyote tonight. Oh, someone's coming. We're pretty close to people here so I'm not too too stressed about bears. Um, but uh, yeah, I've not got the bear spray but I've got a wee knife. <laughs> and um, I'll just die with honour really if uh, I happen to encounter one. At least I'll get to see one before I die. <laughs> yeah. There'll be very serious people in the comments who don't think that's why you should always be prepared. But like, yeah, I can hear the trucks. Anyway, let's go find a coyote.
Did I see a coyote? No. Did I basically spend the night puggering about the bones and taking B-roll? Aye. But the farmer was out in the private, so I don't think there was much chance of seeing one anyway. I still had a good night though. Doesn't work today. 